Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about applying gradients to your projects in Substance Painter. Chances are you want to add some slight or extreme gradients in your projects, especially with stylized work. It's nice to have that little color variation going on in your models. There's a couple of ways you can do it, but I want to show you the easiest way to get the most control over your gradients. You can get them placed exactly how you'd like. Let's get into it. I'm just going to show you using this Jade Toad that is in the samples within the... Um, if you just click file open sample and you can open it up I deleted all the layers so we can just start fresh first I'm just gonna add a fill layer and this is gonna be my base color so I'm just gonna pick a nice blue to go with it Stop. next I'm gonna add another fill layer this is gonna be controlling my gradient right click and add a black mask right click on the black mask and click add generator um, here in your properties then open it up and Click on 3D Linear Gradient. This is going to be one of the easiest and quickest ones you can use, and I'm going to show you how. So as you can see, it's already applying the gray to blue vertical gradient straight away. If we want to choose the color for our gradient, we click back on this first section here and then choose a color. I'm going to go with like a green. And it looks like one of those uh, sweets. You <laughs> get one of those jelly sweets. Right, so then we can go back into our mask, our gradient is there, and we can play around with these settings. So as you see, the balance changes from how strong you want the gradient to be on the top, going down. And the contrast then will be how sharp the gradient is. Obviously, full contrast is just a flat color, one color than the other color. But how can we change this in our setting? So a linear gradient uses the position color of your model. So if you click on the drop down menu here, you can click on position and it will kind of have this position map, which you can then choose colors. So say if I chose here on the nose, it's kind of like a weird color. And then here down below purple, or maybe even the back, we'll choose one on the back. And then if you go back to material, you can see it is running the gradient from where I clicked on the nose to where I clicked on the back. And that is the position gradient going on right now. If we get rid of the contrast, you can see a nice contrast from front to back, but in an angle. Because that's the angle that I've chose. But sometimes that can get a bit awkward. Um, say, yeah, for instance, because because of this, because these colors are all over the place, if I chose, say, not in the dead center, I clicked on this right nostril, and then thought, oh, yeah, I want it down here, and you went back on, it's in a, it's in a really weird angle. Especially if you wanted it directly up and down, or left to right. Um, you can't get it sometimes you can't get it bang on with these um, start and end points from the position map however we can simply ignore the, the position map itself and just change the last the end point to a solid black and then the start we need to make the most out of RGB so I'm going to change it to red first and show you what happens. I'll do it full contrast so you can see what happens. We change this back to 0.5 so it's dead center and now we have a perfect gradient going from left to right in the x direction. Of course if you wanted to go right to left instead you can just change this at the top the param uh, parameter of invert you can do true to false and it'll switch it over. However if we then play around with the other ones so red gives us the x direction if we change it to green It'll be in the Y direction. It'll be perfectly from top to bottom. Or bottom to top, whatever you want to... <laughs> whatever, whichever way you're looking at it. And then if we change it to blue here, we go perfectly from front to back. These are really useful in a way. Obviously, if you add both in, then you get some weird angles. So if we've added red and blue, we've got it angled in this direction. But if you wanted... You know, if you wanted it perfectly front to back, the gradient, or, um, as I said, the different angles. I say front to back because if you do X, Y, and Z, for Substance Painter is different to Blender. Blender's Z is obviously in up and down, whereas in Substance Painter, Y is up and down and Z is back to front. So, um, red is the X direction for Substance Painter, left to right. Green is the Y direction, up and down. Um, and then blue is Z direction, which is back and back to front. So that is one of the easiest and quickest way to add a gradient. Of course, as you, as I said earlier, you can use a position map to get really 
weird angles. But I'm gonna but I'm gonna show you another quick way as well with using a different tool. I highly recommend using the 3D linear gradient tool. I think it's a nice fast way to add a gradient to your your project and give it that nice look to it. However, if you want more control, even more control, what we can do is we're gonna delete that gradient, that generator, sorry. We're gonna add a mask editor generator. So we're gonna add this in. We're gonna get rid of any curvature or anything that's automatically applied. So we've got loads of settings here. So we're gonna leave the global balance at 0.5. However, if you come down, we got position gradient. If we change it, well, again, it's given us that gradient in the Y up and down. If we open this up, then we've got even more properties we can play with. I said the balance, no, as I said, the balance, the contrast, and the brightness we can tweak in this one as well. But if we go down even further, we can change um, that even says top to bottom, right to left. And then front to back. And of course, if you want these the other way around, you can just click invert and it'll do it that way. But then we can um, choose, say we want front to back, halfway or whatever, and then top to bottom, halfway. Depends how you want your gradient to angle. If I change it to contrast, you can see it exactly. You can you can tweak these a bit more. So if you wanted, a, whatever, whatever reason, if you wanted a gradient from this point to over here, and play around with these settings um it probably is it might be quicker to use the position map with the other generator but this does give you a little bit of play around with if you wanted to and uh it gives you a few more properties you can play around with like the opacity and stuff and as i said the brightness it's just another way of adding a gradient onto your model but yeah guys that is the quick way to add and have control over your gradients Substance painter. I hope it was useful to somebody. I know, um, especially the red, green, and blue RGB properties really helped me in my projects. So play around with it, enjoy it, and um, if you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps, and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.